Good afternoon and welcome to the Alpha Financial Software Holding PLC Investor Presentation. Throughout this recorded meeting, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged. You can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Just click Q&A, type in your question and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question received during the meeting itself. However, the company can review all questions submitted today and publish responses where appropriate to do so. Before we begin, I'd like to submit the following poll. And now I'd like to hand you over to Duncan McGrath, CFO. Good afternoon, sir. Hello everyone and welcome to Alpha's 2023 full year results. I'm Duncan McGrath, a CFO of Alpha and I'm joined by Matthew White, our COO. Uh, you were expecting Andrew Denton, the CEO, but unfortunately he's unable to make this presentation and sends his apologies. So Matt and I will cover his sections between us. Perhaps before we get into the details, a few words on what we do at Alpha for those who are perhaps new to the story. There is, of course, a lot of information on our website, but I will try and give a brief flavor now. Alpha provides enterprise software for the asset finance market. Asset finance covers funding for the purchase or use of equipment or vehicles, whether by consumers or corporations. The asset finance market is huge. It spends approximately 3.4 billion per annum on software. The market ranges from small, high volume assets where the complexity is in the business process to very large high value assets where the complexity is in the transaction. Alpha software is able to support all of these forms of asset finance and uniquely it's able to do it across both equipment finance and automotive finance in all geographies. Alpha actually operates across 37 countries and we have offices in EMEA, North America and Asia Pacific. And Matt will go into a bit more detail around this in his section. So on to the results um, for 2023. So um, actually one for slide forward actually. Great. So let's start with a review of 2023. 2023 gave us another rule of 40 financial performance again backed up by very strong cash conversion. The business became more resilient. Customer concentration was at 35%. No single customer contributed more than 10% of our revenue. 19 customers contributed more than 2 million of revenue. That's up from 17 last year. As Matthew will outline, it's been yet another record year for deliveries, 35 deliveries in total, and that included seven go lives. Retention and engagement were at unprecedented levels, as you'll see. We did all of this continuing to deliver our strategy and key to this is moving to subscription. Our financial results remain strong despite the headwinds from this transition, but we are seeing strong growth in subscription TCV and revenue, and these points were a very strong future. And if this was not enough, we've extended our competitive advantage and further secured our future with the release of Alpha System 6, a breakthrough release of our platform. Added to that, the culture of continuous improvement has delivered progressive changes in our Alpha development module, and our positive impact as a business is underpinned, underpinned by the validation of our SBTI targets. Looking forward, Alpha will deliver 10 new modules driving incremental sales, and our capability continues to expand through the growth in our teams, as again, Matthew will explain later. Our sales performance has been stellar and a strong early stage pipeline is backing up the clear strength of the late stage, as, our, as Matthew will touch on later. This confidence in our expectations and our prospects have led the board to increase our ordinary dividend by 8% to 1.3 pence and to declare a special dividend of 2p. So moving on to those key numbers. Our revenue for the year was up 102 million, an increase of 9% from the prior year and our first ever nine digit year. We ended the year with 21.8 million in cash. That's underpinned by excellent cash conversion. Again, this time was about was at 115%. And as I've already mentioned, we made excellent progress in growing our subscription revenue up 16% and within that Alpha Cloud up 31%. Operating profit 
um, that was at 30% operating profit margin or 32% EBITDA. And during the year, we invested in growing our team as well as our software, and our closing headcount was up 8%. Keeping the team together and engaged is critical for our business, so I was delighted to see the year-end retention rate of 97% and with 82% engagement. And finally, we ended the year with a total contract value of 165 million. That's up 16% from the previous year and growing all the time thanks to the strong late stage pipeline. I've already covered the main financial figures, but just to emphasize that we've had a strong financial performance. Revenue was up 9% over last year. Operating profit was up 2% at 30 million with an operating profit margin of 30%. The effective tax rate of 21% was higher than last year on the back of the increase in the UK corporation tax rate, resulting in diluted EPS being down 2% at 7.9 pence. Alpha historically was reliant on a small number of large customers, but over the last few years, we've made great progress in diversifying, as I mentioned earlier. But here is now a more visual representation of that. We cover many different end markets, which you can see on the left. Each of these squares is proportional to the revenue that we have in those markets. On the right, we've shown how we've now got a broad base of customers who provide more than 2 million of revenues every year. And this is a dramatic improvement compared with 2019. And finally, another way of looking at this is the top five customers account for 35% of our revenues, whereas five years ago, this was 61%. We measure what we call TCV or total contract value, and the methodology remains unchanged. But before I go into that, again, for those perhaps not familiar with, with Alpha, I'll explain our three revenue streams. Subscription revenues cover Alpha Cloud and also where we charge license and maintenance for non-Alpha Cloud clients. This is where we bill on a regular basis, be it monthly or annually. Software revenues are where we charge customers for software development work or where we charge a one-off perpetual license. Note that the perpetual licenses are largely a historic issue, and this is declining as we move into subscription. And then finally, services are any services other than development <clears throat> where we charge the customer on a day rate basis, primarily for implementing the software. So for TCV, we make a few assumptions in calculating the figure. We assume that all subscription contracts will stay with us for three years. In practice, it is many more years than this, but we've assumed a very conservative three years. For software revenues, we include anything that is contracted. And for services revenue, we take what is contracted, but we do on occasion assume that where we've started a new implementation with a customer, that this will be completed, even if not fully covered by what we call a statement of work. The most important thing is that we calculate this consistently. And so it is the movements in TCV that are most important rather than necessarily the absolute figures. So total TCV of 165 million is up 16% over last year with strong growth in subscription TCV as we signed up customers in the late stage pipeline. We also show how much of that TCV will be recognized in the next 12 months. And at 67 million, this was up 3%. Again, strong growth in subscription TCV, but somewhat offset by reductions in software and services in advance of converting some big customers that are in the late stage pipeline. So now looking at this revenue breakdown. So talking now about the subscription revenues, these increased 16% over last year with revenues of 32 million. We have only had an alpha cloud first approach to sales for the last few years, but we are now seeing the benefits of this in the growth in revenues and TCV, which was up 28%. We are now live with 13 Alpha Cloud customers with another three in implementation. Moving on to our second revenue stream, software revenues. These decreased by 4% in the year with TCV down 11% as a result of the reduced revenues from those customized licenses 
as we transition to subscription. We also performed less chargeable development work for customers as we look to focus more on investment into Alpha System 6, which you'll hear more about from Matt in a minute. So turning to our final revenue stream, services. Total services revenue increased by 10% to 54.6 million <clears throat> with growth in both existing and new customers. TCV is down 5% versus the same time last year, and this is due to existing projects getting towards the end of their implementation. We expect the TCV to increase in 2024 as new projects contract. Turning now to expenses. I won't go into too much detail on the costs, but we'll pick out a few items. Overall, costs increased 13% on last year. As you would expect, salary costs are the biggest component of our cost base, and these increased 12% over last year, with average headcount up 10%. Hosting costs grew on the back of the strong growth in Alpha Cloud. We have a profit share scheme, which takes approximately 10% of our profits, and apart from senior managers, is shared amongst all employees, and this increased in the year. Turning now to that strong cash flow that I talked about earlier. We focus a lot on cash conversion, a measure of how much profit is converted into cash. We had a very strong year in 2023 with 115% cash conversion. As we move to a subscription model, we generally expect to operate around 100% cash conversion, but this can fluctuate from year to year. We had 4.8 million of share purchases in the period, 3.1 million arose from, share, from purchases under a share buyback scheme, which completed in June 2023, and 1.7 million from purchases of shares for the Employee Benefit Trust, which we used to satisfy any share option vesting and avoid diluting shareholders. We also paid 19.7 million of dividends in the period. So on to the balance sheet. Picking out some key items and firstly trade receivables. As just noted, we had very strong cash collection at the start and end of 2023. And you can see this with receivables of 5.6 million being 3.3 million lower than last year end. Cash increased to 21.8 million on the back of the strong cash generation, even after funding those dividends and share purchases. Corporation tax recoverable is up on 2022 as a result of receivables for R&D claims. Now moving on to cash allocation. Our basic principle is if we have excess cash, we will return it to shareholders. We like to retain some optionality, so we have a relatively low ordinary dividend, but use a higher special dividend to return excess capital. There are no immediate investment requirements, and so alongside declaring an ordinary dividend of 1.3 pence per share, which is 8% up on last year, we have also declared a special dividend of 1.2 pence per share. Next, a little bit around modelling. 2023 was weighted towards the first half, and we expect 2024 to be weighted towards the second half due to the timing of customer funded development and the startup of new projects. Within this, however, we expect subscription revenues to continue to show strong sequential growth quarter by quarter. We expect the full year effective tax rate to be around 26% due to the full year impact of the UK corporation tax rate of 25%, along with having to now show R&D benefits in other income, as we are now classified as a large corporate under HMRC terms, and so we've moved into a new regime called the RDEC or Research and Development Expenditure Credit. So that moves the benefit from the tax line into other income. We generate more US dollars and euro revenues than we have costs, and so we are sensitive to currency movements. And I've shown these sensitivities on these slides, and they've increased slightly from last year, simply due to the growth in the business. So I'll now hand over to Matt to cover the operational and business highlights. Thanks, Duncan. Whenever we meet investors, 
and potential investors. We emphasize the size of our market opportunity because the size of that opportunity is key to understanding alpha and to understanding our strategy. As Duncan said, the annual spend on software in the asset finance industry is around $3.4 billion. We are one of the biggest players in our market and we have annual revenue of around 100 million sterling. So we have a huge market to grow into. And our strategy, that's our four S's that you can see on the screen now, are all about enabling growth into that opportunity. The first element of our strategy is strengthening, strengthening our key differentiators. That's our product, our delivery track record, and our people. Those three differentiators give us our competitive advantage in our market. We are a recognized market leader, and we're also recognized to be the premium player. My role at Alpha is to ensure that we continue to strengthen those differentiators, and I'll talk about each of them in turn over the next few slides. The second element of our strategy is selling, selling our single tenant SaaS product into our target markets. Scaling our capacity for delivering includes the obvious, such as growing our headcount, but it also includes other elements, such as increasing the amount that partner companies can take on in implementing our software. And the final element of our strategy is simplification, simplifying our product, our implementations and everything that we do enables us to achieve more. Our product is our first differentiator. That's Alpha Systems, that's our software. We have a single product with a single code set covering all customers and all of those markets in which we work. And 2023 saw continued investment in Alpha Systems, extending our advantage. We release a new version of our product every four weeks. Every new release is available to every customer as a frictionless upgrade. And every release includes many product improvements. Some of those product enhancements are internally funded by Alpha, and some of those product enhancements are funded directly by our customers. And the opportunity to do so is valuable for our customers where they want us to prioritize their particular agenda. And we do so where there is alignment with our overall product direction. So customers are able to pay for prioritization of features. When complete, some enhancements are freely available to all customers, demonstrating to them the benefit of investing in packaged software. But some enhancements to Alpha Systems are included only in additional saleable modules. Now, one of those four weekly releases in 2024 will see us change our major, our major version number and Alpha V5 will become Alpha Systems 6. And while it will only be one time box away from the final release of V5, Alpha Systems 6 is far beyond anything we could have imagined in V5's early days. And it will include 10 new functional modules, providing further revenue generation opportunities for Alpha, as they can be sold as incremental modules to existing customers. As well as functional enhancement, we've continued to invest to maintain our technology advantage. Ongoing technology investment in our product is important as part of our commitment to avoid technical debt, which would have to be paid down at some point in the future and also to continue to attract and to retain the best technology talent in our industries. Added together, the functional and technical investment in our product in 2023 comes to 35 million pounds, a further increase on the 29 million invested in 2022. Alpha Cloud represents the additional revenue from providing a subscription hosted version of our product. And this is our fastest growing revenue stream with nearly all new customers and more than half of our customer base as a whole now taking advantage of our single tenant SaaS offering rather than using our software on premise. 
And finally, on our product, Alpha IQ, our AI joint venture, has moved in-house at Alpha. We were ahead of the game on AI and incorporating these exciting technologies into our product and into our operational efficiency is now BAU for us. Our delivery track record is perhaps our key differentiator. Alpha Systems provides the heart and lungs for our customers' businesses. It's not enabling software for an internal business function. So by that, I mean that it's not software for a finance or HR team within a customer's organization. Rather, Alpha Systems is line of business software supporting asset finance providers in selling and then credit checking and underwriting and funding and then administering asset finance agreements. So that means that any Alpha Systems implementation is necessarily a huge and complex business change process. And we succeed with those risky business change projects where our competitors fail. That makes us the low risk choice and it makes our delivery a key differentiator. As a company, we never forget that our efforts all come together when we successfully deliver our software for a customer. And we had another record year in delivery with seven new customer go lives. We also had a record number of deliveries overall with 35 in total, including those new customer go lives as well as customer upgrades. Our strategy, as I mentioned, is to simplify the implementation of Alpha Systems so that we can take advantage of that huge opportunity that we've got with more concurrent implementations of our software. And we're progressing that strategy every year with incremental investment in delivery improvements. Those improvements are enabling us to implement Alpha Systems with reduced effort. That reduces cost for our customers. It allows us to implement more software and to increase our margin. And finally, I'll turn to our people. For anyone new to Alpha, it's really important to understand our culture and some of the things that make Alpha a really special place to work. Hopefully, you'll get a bit of a feeling for that today from me and Duncan. Lots of us have been around for a long time. I joined as a graduate in 1999. Andrew Denton, our CEO, he was, he'd been around for a while before I arrived. And Duncan's the relative newcomer. He joined on the first day of lockdown. Uh, but then we didn't need an experienced listed CFO back in 1999. We work really hard to attract fantastic talent in our industries and in our geography, in the various geographies in which we work. We recruit a lot of graduates and also some experienced technology talent. And then we get that team engaged, sharing a purpose and building something special together and people stick around, partly because we continue to bring in fantastic new talent, so there's a nice virtuous circle there. 2023 saw us continue to grow our excellent team. Average headcount grew by 10% to 463. And importantly, our really strong retention rate has allowed us to consolidate experience levels within the team as a whole, while we continue to recruit. We've also continued to improve our learning and development. The culture as a whole at Alpha has a huge bias towards personal and organizational growth as we build Alpha together. And this investment in increasing our headcount, in retaining our talented team and improving learning and development will enable us to take advantage of the very strong pipeline. So, 2023 was a year of fantastic delivery for our customers, but also of continued investment in our product, in our delivery capability, and in our team. And we're set fair to push on with exciting new customers in 2024. And speaking of those exciting new customers, I'll turn to the late stage pipeline. We continue our strong sales momentum with no late stage losses and three wins during the year. 
We've also more than replenished those wins with the late stage pipeline ending the year up at 11. Over the year, we've added six new prospects to the late stage, and you can see a bit more detail on that late stage pipeline in the appendix to this presentation. To give you a bit of context on that pipeline, we're very strict with the way that we report. We count a prospect as part of the pipeline until we have a fully signed contract pack, including the license and the hosting that we need for Go Live. And that's why we're doing paid work with five of the 11 prospects in the late stage pipeline. To give you a bit of historical context, this is about as strong as the late stage pipeline has ever been, taking into account the number of prospects listed here, the quality of those prospects, and the fact that we're working with so many of them. And that's why we're so excited about the pipeline. Turning to the outlook, demand for asset finance software remains robust and our projects continue with new opportunities adding to our pipeline. Revenue growth is expected to be mid to high single digit. And as Duncan has outlined, we expect greater weighting in H2 as new sales come on stream. Subscription revenues are growing strongly in line with our strategy and we're continuing to invest in the business, both our people and our software ahead of growth. So to recap, another rule of 40 financial performance backed up again by strong cash conversion. Customer concentration at 35%, no single customer greater than 10% of our total revenue and 19 customers with more than 2 million of revenues. Another record year for delivery, 35 in total, including seven new customer go lives, retention and engagement at unprecedented levels, and all of this while continuing to deliver on our strategy. Key to this is our move to subscription with strong growth in subscription TCV and revenue. And all of this points to a very strong future and extending our competitive advantage further, securing our future with the release of Alpha System 6, delivering progressive change in our Alpha development model and our positive impact being ratified and underpinned by the validation of our SBTI targets. 10 new modules driving incremental sales looking forward and that stellar sales performance backing up our confidence in the business. And thanks to that confidence, we've increased our ordinary dividend by 8% to 1.3 pence, and we're declaring a special dividend of two pence. Thank you very much for listening, and we'll move on to questions. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed, Duncan and Matthew. Ladies and gentlemen, do please continue to submit your questions. Just using the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Just while the team take a few moments to review those questions submitted today, I'd like to remind you that recording the presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your Investor dashboard. Duncan, Matthew, as you can see, we've had several questions that have come through from investors throughout today's presentation. Can I just please ask you just to click on that Q&A tab and where appropriate to do so, just read out the question, give you a response and I'll pick up from you at the end, please. Yeah, so I'll take the uh, I'll take the first question and then um, Matt, you might want to take um, the second and third one and we'll see where we go from there. So, so the first question was around um, uh, how has the transition towards a subscription based model impacted revenue growth and retention? Um, I'm taking the retention here to be to be the retention of customers. It's probably worth starting there, to be honest. Um, I think some software companies, when they move from a historical um, uh, uh, on-premise based system to a new digital uh, cloud-based system, they potentially lose a lot of customers in the process of the transition. Um, the transition we've gone through at Alpha is, is in fact very different to that. Um, the transition we've gone through is that we've been operating on a digital cloud native piece of software um, called version 5 from 2010. So actually, we're continuing to sell the same piece of software. It's just now that people can effectively have um, the software based uh, uh, with all the services that we provide through Alpha Cloud um, within it. Um, so actually, um, unlike some uh, other software companies, we've not had to force anybody to move off 
an old um, version of the system. So we've not gone through a, a, lo a loss of customers. And indeed, um, every um, V5 customer, we've never left, lost a V5 customer. And there have been two exceptions to that. One where um, one of our customers was bought by another one of our customers. So actually the portfolio stayed on Alpha. Uh, and the other one was a customer that actually exited the asset finance market and, and sold their portfolio. But we've never lost a V5 customer um, uh, to a competitive tender. And, and it's been V5 that we've been selling since 2010. We do have some um, legacy customers on V3 and V4 and the process of transitioning them um, is, is getting towards the end now. Um, and all of those people have taken sort of alpha cloud. So, so our subscription basis has been effectively selling the same piece of software, but enabling people to effectively buy the alpha cloud services and pay for it through a subscription model rather than paying for a large upfront perpetual license. So the second part of the question then is how's it's impacted the revenue? So, um, no, no loss in customers, um, from what I've just said. So the impact has really been um, largely driven by um, uh, uh, accounting impacts, to be honest. Um, and there's a danger of me switching the whole audience off when I start talking about accounting at this point. Um, but essentially, the old perpetual license model um, basically recognized revenue slightly quicker than, than a subscription based model. And so um, what we've had is a bit of a headwind from um, effectively, if you the, the, the new contracts we're selling now, we're effectively recognizing revenue slower on a subscription basis than if we had been selling a perpetual license. So we've seen a transition from sort of, we're still recognizing some existing contracts that were sold on a perpetual license basis and the revenue for that is, is declining. The new revenue for the subscription contracts is picking up but it's picking up uh, more slowly than it would have done um, if we'd been selling a perpetual license. Offsetting all of that, we've obviously got a new um, service alpha cloud, which we are, we're selling for. So it's difficult to be precise as to what, what the net impact is. Um, if it was completely like for like, um, we would have seen slower revenue growth, but obviously we've got um, some very good growth that we talked about, the underlying growth in alpha cloud of 31%. Um, has obviously helped um, offset some of that as well. So, Matt, I don't know if you'd like to pick up. Um... Happy to, yeah. Um, so perhaps worth probably first giving a little bit of background on uh, Alpha IQ, our uh, AI joint venture with our partner Bitfount. It was a fantastic um, experience for us. We benefited hugely from bringing in some fantastic talent and also from our Bitfound, our partner. We've proven out two use cases for predictive AI in credit decisioning and in analyzing business processes and understanding how to, how to improve uh, those processes. When we say that uh, AI is part of business as usual, what we mean is that we've brought that joint venture and the talent in-house at Alpha um, and the next step for us in terms of um, gaining, uh, in terms of enhancing our competitive position in this space, which is uh, the, the, what the question is about, is, um, is in developing some products, a product within Alpha Systems directly, probably for targeted use cases, such as receipt allocation. Those targeted use cases um, enable our customers to gain benefit quickly and uh, without complex um, legal analysis that's required around um, personally identifiable information um, and um, some of the other ethical concerns around um, the use of uh, customer data um, in, um, in predictive AI. The other thing that we've done as part of bringing uh, Alpha IQ in-house is that we've, we've provided mentoring and training to each of our product area owners so that in every product area we have awareness of ai and uh, its potential and we've also we're also providing sponsorship to all of our innovation areas we have uh, we've got a fantastic innovation agenda at alpha and uh, we have a number of innovation items in the ai space each of which is uh, mentored and assisted by um, ai experts that we've um, We've recruited and we've grown as part of that joint venture with Alpha IQ. So it's a, it's a really exciting space for us. 
and uh, yes, to directly answer the question, uh, it does enhance our competitive position in this space. Uh, the next question was about um, the competitive landscape and what needs to be achieved to gain a larger slice of the market opportunity. As I said, we're the, we're the, the premium player within the industries in which we work. Um, generally speaking, the transition from legacy technologies onto alpha systems is driven by, um, by a number of factors, some push, some pull. So we see our customers being forced to um, invest in their systems in, for a number of reasons. Uh, often they're working on very old technology, sometimes uh, based on a, on a mainframe with um with systems that have been in place for decades uh, that introduces risk and it introduces cost and um it's uh, that's one of the key drivers for investing in that software and moving to alpha systems regulatory change will also push our customers into um, investing in their software or uh, um, moving on to modernized platforms uh, there are also pull factors, so um, the the need to keep up with changing technology. The, um, for example, we were talking this morning about the move to electric vehicles. That can be a push factor because the need to um, provide um, financing alongside vehicles for charging infrastructure adds a level of complexity that either legacy systems or in some cases our competitors can't handle. Um, uh, and the need to continually innovate within the asset finance space um, also uh, introduces complexity that legacy software and our competitors can't handle. So uh, to answer the question, we need to keep being the best. We, need, we will continue to see those push factors and those pull factors prompting prospects to uh, invest in their systems and prompting prospects to move on to uh, Alpha. Matt, I might take the next one and then add, ask you to chip in at the end because you're you're the expert on this. The other thing I would just add to the point you made about competitive landscape, I think you know our delivery record is is um, second to none and continuing to have a really, really strong delivery record is the best sales pitch that we can, gan uh, we can gather and that builds momentum and that helps with getting a share of the market. So that's a, that's a really um, important point, which sort of leads neatly onto the, the next question, which was um, question is, you talked about the focus on software simplification to accelerate implementations with a focus on partners. Can you indicate how many of your projects are delivered by partners and where you expect this to go? Do they specialize in certain verticals or customer sizes? So um, just perhaps just as a, again, for those who are not completely familiar with Alpha at the moment, what, what we're, when we're talking about partners in this context, um, we're talking about augmentation partners. So these are partners that provide uh, people um, to go on projects and work alongside our people. Um, so at the moment, we still effectively run the projects, but when we're uh, um, short of resource, we can um, uh, help, uh, we can ask our partners to provide some people on, onto those projects. And this is a program that's been um, underway for a number of years now. Um, uh, ultimately, uh, as Matt talked about earlier, there is ultimately a prize of trying to get to partner-led delivery, but um, Matt may wish to comment on that in a minute. But if we stick to augmentation partners, then um, actually every project in EMEA last year had at least one partner on them. Um, and so um, we've had a broad spread across EMEA. Um, and um, this, uh, we've also had two projects in America with where we've had augmentation partners on. Um, in terms of specializing in certain verticals or customer sizes, no, um, effectively they are um, they are working on our projects in, in our space. Um, so as we um, help to train them and they get to understand our business, then they can do, do more with us. Um, but no, they don't, um, it, it can operate across uh, equipment um, and automotive and it can operate in the EMEA and the US. Um, and, they can operate across um, company sizes, sometimes actually um, uh, a smaller uh, project may be more difficult because obviously you need a wider range of skills and a smaller number of people. Um, so but they, they've operated in small projects and large projects as well. But Matt, you may wish to add something onto that. 
Yep. Um, staff augmentation partners are really important to us. They give us they give us experience. Um, they give us bench. So when I say they give us experience, they might have worked in a particular geography that we haven't worked in in the past. And that's a really important part of our strategy. As Duncan said, we are moving towards partner led delivery. Um, this year, we haven't we haven't talked about um, Alpha Start, which is our product for the um, for smaller asset finance players. This year, we've had a partner for the first time working on an Alpha Start project, and that's really important because Alpha Start projects are small, short projects. In the past, we've always needed people with lots of Alpha experience and access to all of Alpha's. Um, internal knowledge base in order to be involved in those implementations, and so the fact that this year we've um, made the we've made the improvements to our methodology, to our tooling, and also to our infrastructure to enable a staff augmentation partner to work on one of those projects is really important to us in the move towards partner-led delivery. Partner-led delivery is um, uh, important to us for the obvious reason: it increases our capacity for delivering alpha systems and for making the most of that strategic opportunity that that strategy is all about. Shall we move on to the next question, Duncan? Yeah. Uh, so it's about um, alphas, outperformance of competitors and whether we're referring to generic ERP operators such as SAP or whether there are other lease finance specialists that we complete, that we compete with. Uh, so the, the answer is yes. Um, there's a bit of a cycle to um, the competitors that we see in the market. Um, I'm gonna, uh, t 10 years ago, we used to see SAP and we used to see Oracle a little bit more than we do now um, competing for new work in our industry. Um, Nowadays, we don't see those guys so much. We tend to see um, other specialists, providers of um, asset finance software of whom there are a number. Um, and we, we also see occasionally, although it's reducing, we'll actually see competition from um, in-house software development. So the, the, we're, we're dealing with major organizations, banks, finance companies, manufacturers, and they'll, they'll often have a team of software developers in-house and, and sometimes they, they kind of act as a sort of a, a pseudo competition offering to develop software. Um, that's because of the complexity of the industry in which we work, that's a very difficult ask for an independent for an in-house IT team. And so that's um, that's falling away a little bit. Um, it, similarly to um, the ERP operators. Um, even the might of Oracle and SAP Tr tried to get into our industry, found it very difficult, and we were able to um, able to beat them. Um, actually, uh, worth mentioning, often we are when we are implementing for a customer, we're converting off one of the ERP providers or a general banking software provider because um, it's for a growing portfolio. Um, a more generalist finance platform was able to deal with the um, early growth of the early growth of the product within our customer. But when it comes to looking to um, specialize in asset finance, that's a lot harder for something more general to handle. On to those um, specialist providers it tends to vary by geography. What we don't see is um, any any individual specialist provider other than us that is equally strong in all of the areas in which we in which we work so we'll see different competitors in different parts of our market different competitors in auto finance and equipment finance different competitors in the us to europe to uk or to our asia pacific markets and it's a real strength of ours that we're able to play in all of those markets and we're able to win in all of those markets and be seen as the as the premium provider I think it's worth adding, Matt, that anybody wants to do a bit more homework, there is a freely available report by Deloitte on the asset finance software market. So if you wanted to find out more that you can just Google that, you can get it off the Deloitte website and that does give a flavor for the market and, and the competitive landscape. 
Fantastic. Thank you, Duncan Matthew, indeed, for answering all those questions you can from investors. And of course, the company can review all questions submitted and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. Before redirecting investors to provide you with their feedback, which is particularly important to the company, Matthew, can I ask you for a few closing comments, please? Of course. Um, firstly, I guess we'd like to thank everybody for joining us and um, thank the team at Investor Meet Company for making this possible. Um, it's a bit disconcerting standing in our offices, um, speaking into our computers. So it's been really great to see the interaction. Thank you very, very much for that. But a really special thanks to our team here at Alpha. Hopefully you've got a flavor. It's a great place to work and we're, we're really enjoying building Alpha together. And we're really proud of the strategic progress that we're making together, building the team, investing in our product and seeing the sales come through as a result and being able to tell all of you about another year of growth on all fronts another year of rule of 40 financial performance with a growing tcv falling customer concentration and uh, really fast growing subscription revenue pointing to an exciting future so thank you paul thank you everybody Fantastic. Duncan Matthew, thanks indeed for updating investors today. Okay, please ask investors not to close this session. You'll be automatically redirected to provide your feedback. In order the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete and be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Alpha Financial Software Holdings PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation. That concludes today's session and good afternoon to you all.